Welcome to Excel Business Math Series number 9. We're in the workbook Business Math Chapter 01. If you want to download this, if you go to my YouTube site, user slash Excel is fun. You go down to the bottom and on the left you click on my college website link. And at the very bottom, control end, is the workbooks you can download for each chapter. If you're in the class at Highline Community College, just go to our website and you can download this. Hey, in this one we've got to talk about rounding. Hey, uh, I'm going to show you how to do it by hand and then we'll of course see how to do it in Excel. Up at the top here are our 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 are our official rules for rounding by hand. Down here are the official rules for rounding in Excel. Let's see how to do it. Hey, we have this big number here, and financial statements statements are off, often rounded to the thousand position. So how in the world do we do that? Well, the thousand position is right there, that little zero, seven zero zero, that zero right there. And how you round is first you pick the position to round to. So number one, pick the position. We're going to round to there. Number two, you look to the uh, digit directly to the right, so that would be this 4, and you ask two questions. Hey, is this greater than or equal to 5? The answer is no. Then you ask, is this less than 5? Or you could ask it, is it 4 or less? If that's true, then you hack off all, you, you convert all of these to zeros and don't do anything to that. So if we're doing it by hand, since this is a 4 and that's where we're rounding to, we would type Five six nine eight seven zero zero, and then since we're supposed to hack all these off, it has to become zero zero zero. And we could put point zero zero, but we don't really need to. And there it is. That's a rounding by hand. We'll see how to do that in Excel in just a moment. Now, income tax um, are usually rounded to the ones position. Well, now we have to find the ones. There it is, right there the dollar, right, or the one. So if I ever ask you to round to the dollar or to the ones position, there it is. Number one, pick your position. There it is, five. Look to the digit directly to your right. Is that five or greater? N no, it's not. Is it uh, four, four or less or less than five? Yes, it is. So we just hack those off. That becomes zero, zero, and we write five, five, five. 555. Now, why aren't the um, decimals? Watch this. I'm going to type 555.00. How come when I hit enter, those um, decimals don't show? Do not get tricked by it. It's just formatting. If we were to highlight these and increase the decimal, um, home ribbon here or in 2003, the increased decimal button is just on the formatting toolbar. Uh, I have to do it one more time. Nope. Oh. Now, payroll deductions are rounded to the hundredth position or the penny. So first we pick our position. Oh, there it is, that 5.25. So we have to round to the penny because we're using money. We look here. Is this 5 or greater? It is. So we then add one to that 5 position. So this is going to become 98.26. And then we convert the rest of them to 0. So 98.26. So that's doing it by hand. Now let's scroll down and see how to do it in Excel. Uh, here's examples here. You can come and read this uh, later. Those are the official rules. Uh, here's the number, and we're going to use the round function just like we did in chapter 00, zero equals round. And we're going to click on the number. Many times this is a calculation, which we'll see as in the upcoming chapters. And then we have to hit comma, and we have to say how many uh, digits we want to round to. Now, if we're rounding, here's the decimal. If you're rounding to the, uh, or as we saw in last chapter, we, we took the penny, right? We used the number 2 for that. If you're rounding to the 10th uh, position, it would be not 2, but 1. And if you're rounding to the uh, integer, or dollar, or 1's position, it would be a 0. Well, notice the logic. 2, 1, 0. Well, if this... 5 would then be negative 1. This would be negative 2. And to the thousands position, it would be negative 3. The way I remember this is I always just remember in my memor in my mind, I memorize, oh, yeah, the penny is 2 because it's two decimals. And then the logic is go backwards this way, and you start subtracting numbers. Uh, going to the right, you would add numbers. All right, so since we're going right there, we have to put a negative 3, minus 3, close parentheses, and enter. And you can see it did it. 
Now let's do this one. Uh, income taxes are rounded to the ones position equals round. And we're going to click on that right there, comma, and the number of digits. Well, I, I'm, memory, I'm remembering that this is 2, so if I'm rounding to the dollar right there, it would be 2, 1, 0. Enter. Now, uh, payroll deductions are usually round to the hundredth position. Notice the TH because it's to the right of the decimal. And since it's the hundredth, well, that's the penny, right? So we're rounding to the penny. We just know, we already know that one. It's, to the, it's 2 equals round. And we'll click right there, comma, 2. Now, um, let's go ahead and uh, do s a couple more here. And we're going to uh, be sure to remind ourselves to use the increase or de decrease decimals. First off, um, let's uh, highlight these right here. And I'm going to use Control-1 to go to uh, my Format Cells dialog box. And I'm going to click on uh, currency, right? Because these are income taxes and payroll. So I'm going to click on currency and then uh, click OK. See, it looks like there's 0.26 there and 0.25. Now I'm going to go up uh, again home uh, up in here in 2007. These increase and decrease are on your formatting toolbars in earlier versions. Watch this now. I'm going to, if I get these numbers given to me by someone else, I always like to increase the decimals just to see, oh yeah. Look at that. There's a bunch of extra decimals. So if I'm required to round, I'd have to uh, be aware of that. And so the increase and decrease decimal is very convenient. Please do not get tricked in this class by formatting. Uh, I'm going to uh, control one and go back to general. That gets rid of all the format. You can see all the decimals. Now, income taxes round to the, to the ones or dollar. We already know that equals round and click on this, comma, zero. And this one's to the penny, equals round, comma, this one, sorry, round, function, the cell or the calculation, and then comma, since we're rounding to the penny, too. Now, um, I want to show you how to insert a sheet and do some of this uh, rounding by looking at something, because you're, you're going to have to type stuff. I'm not going to always give you these templates. How do we insert a sheet? You can right click, go to insert, and then ask you what you want to insert. I'm going to say a worksheet, and then click OK. Notice it comes up sheet one. I'm going to right click and delete that. That's how you delete sheets. And here's how you would in insert a sheet with a keyboard shortcut. Shift F11. That's Shift F11. And I'm going to call this um, round. You can't name it the same thing as that, but I'll call it round. Now I'm going to go over to my uh, the PDFs, which are at our college website. And here's uh, 9.86, and we run our, our round to the nearest tenth. So we pick the position. We look here. This is greater than 5. There it is. So we hack it off, and we add 1 to here, right? So we add 1 once we hack that off. So this becomes... Uh, 9.9. .9. So let's take this 9.86. I'm going to say uh, number tab 9.96. And then I'm actually going to right click, uh, point this number one, right click insert. And I'm going to put a label here. Um, I'm going to say uh, round to tenth. Then I'll come up here and double click right between the C and the D so it best fits the column. And then I'm going to use uh, equals round. Click on there. Oh, this is to the tenth, right? I know the penny is two, so this must be one. Uh oh, what's happening there? Why is it showing me ten? Don't get tricked by this. Increase the decimal. Uh, oh, well, is that what really what we wanted to do? What was the Oh, I typed in the wrong number. So it's 8.6. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. So we, we this is a common mistake. We uh, got a 10. We're like, oh, well, maybe that's wrong. So I increased the decimal. Well, no, that's right. Well, Excel sir, isn't making an error. So it must be uh, driver. The driver is making the error. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to edit this up here like this, highlight that 9, and type an 8. And there it is. We can decrease the decimal. Let's try another one here. I'm going to type uh, a number one here. 
And then I'm going to click and drag this down like that so I get number two and number one. Let's go over to the PDFs. The next one, oh, around 0 0.054 to the nearest cent, right? Because there's no such thing as um, parts of a penny, so we need, need to round to there. So let's type 0 0.054. Let's make sure that's right. Yeah, that's right. And we're rounding to the penny, which is 2, equals round. I'm going to click on this, comma, 2. So there was that. That's to the uh, the tenth, which is tenths to which is one, and this one's to the penny, which is two. Finally, we have uh, this one here. We want to round to the nearest dollar, five hundred and forty-nine point four nine. Five hundred and forty-nine point four nine. I love this when it happens in taxes because we're almost up, but um, we get to round this and hack off that forty-nine. And that's the zero because we're going to the integer or the dollar, right? So we took, we put in 549 instead of 549.49. A couple more things about rounding. That. Now look at that. I just forgot uh, this was a uh, label for here, and that's not um, right at all. So I'm going to click in this cell. And actually, you can point to the... Uh, um, outside edge of this and when you see that cursor you can click and drag and it moves it so that's rounding to the tenths this one here we are rounding uh, I'm gonna say round to the penny and this one here we rounded to the dollar why are we doing this because um, uh, you gotta label everything labeling everything in your spreadsheets is as important as uh, building the right formulas, uh, putting the numbers in the cells and referring to them as cell references in your formulas. Because tomorrow or the next day when you come back here, you may not have any idea what you were doing here. So putting good labels like this is very important. Go over and click on our sheet called Payroll Rounding. We did this uh, last chapter. Uh, when you're doing uh, multiplication of decimals, we have a, a tax rate here and a uh, gross pay with a decimal here. Forget it. As soon as you're doing multiplication or division with decimals and you're required to round, and we're going to use this calculation in a subsequent calculation, you have to round. Those rules are right there. That's one, two, three. Uh, if you'll use rules for when to use the round function, if you will use the result of a formula and subsequent Excel formula, and you are multiplying, dividing decimals, where you are required to round a certain position, you must use the round function. Equals round, and I'm going to click on the gross pay, which is a relative cell reference, one to my left, times, and I'm going to click on this, and how do I lock that? So when I copy it down, it's always looking at B8. Use the F4 key close parentheses, and I'm going to use control enter. Oh, look at that. I forgot what. And by the way, I'm going to control enter. What does it say? This is actually kind of polite. It says you're entering too few arguments. Ooh, arguments. Arguments just means uh, one and two things need to go in separated by a comma. Hey, I forgot. So I'm going to click right here. Comma. Notice how the bold jumps to numbers of digits. And finally, we're required to go to the penny, so we use a two. Control Enter, and I'm going to click and drag, and then I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut for Auto Sum. Auto Sum is up here on Home or on your toolbar in 2003, but I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt equals. Now, um, notice we were uh, using a subsequent calculation, adding, so that's why we had to round. Now let's. Uh, click here and we're going to do net pay equals ew gross minus our deduction actually it's not ew gross it's ew deduction because that means our net pay is uh, much less than our gross then I'm going to click and drag this down and then I can do my uh, keyboard shortcut for auto sum alt equals okay so don't forget one two three things you need to remember for uh, when to use the round function rounding explanation now, um, if you want, you can look here. This is a uh, problem I gave in a test. And um, here's the instructions. Um, may, may not be C4 to C6, so it's, oh, right here. Uh, now, this 
right here, I use the round. You can see, and if I click in the cell and hit F2, I, I use the round, right? But here's an example of what happens when you don't use the round, right? So if you want to read this, this is in the workbook. You can read all the explanations, one, two, three, exactly why you get into trouble when you don't use the round. So this is something for you to download and read if you'd like. All right, when we come back in our uh, next business math video, we'll look at adding and subtracting. All right, see you then.